probably in grammar school because I was, <clears throat> my abilities in other fields of learning were somewhat limited and uh, I was always drawn to the drawing and painting and uh, I pursued that with a vengeance. As soon as I graduated from high school, I entered the University of Cincinnati as an art major. I spent two years there before I decided that I was going to go out and make my mark in the art field. And I left UC and I went to work for two years as a layout artist at Gibson Art Company in Cincinnati. Right. And I decided <laughs> after two years that that's not exactly what my cup of tea was going to be. And so I left Gibson Art and enrolled in Ohio State right. and finished up my undergraduate degree there. I think, I think artists are around to uh, show people what's there to be seen. Um, most people today are so busy and so preoccupied with the mundane aspects of living that I don't think they really take the time to look carefully at their environment or the people or the situations. And consequently, they don't see what an artist sees. Because I think all artists are influenced by people around them. I've always been a figurative sculptor, um, but I've wandered off that path on occasion simply because I wanted to pursue other ideas. And that was undoubtedly because there were, I was influenced by something I had seen or another artist I had, whose work I appreciated. Probably time, budgeting time, because I'm not a very well organized person. My wife can probably attest to that. And uh, it's very, very difficult because if I'm at work on a piece in the studio, 12, 14 hours can go by in a heartbeat. And, uh, but it's the real process of finding a block of time so that I can enter into an idea and stay preoccupied with it over a period that makes, makes things happen. I think probably I, I couldn't conceive of a, any other way of spending my time. Um, I will, I sit sometimes and think about ideas that I really, hopefully I'll live long enough to pursue, but uh, it's, uh, it's conceptually a way of life and it's, it's one that I can't imagine living any other way. To a certain extent, I, well, I'm pretty much old school, um, but I had to, for example, when I was working with cast acrylic resins, I had to learn enough about the basic chemistry to control the material. But uh, I'm certainly not a chemist, and I'm certainly not a technician. Um, I've been able to achieve a certain amount of success just through trial and error. I would support that wholeheartedly because anybody who is an artist brings their own interpretive skills to the process. And uh, you learn something by looking at other artists' work. And the general, the general public learns something about life by looking through the, the eyes of a, of a minority artist. Uh, many years ago, a colleague of mine, Jim Kennedy, and I put together a rather large slide collection of minority artworks. And uh, I can remember some visits we made out to Houston, Texas, visiting artists in the Chicano community, which were very enlightening. Not only was the art spectacular, but these people were rather spectacular. And what they had to say through their art was very, very spectacular. The museum is doing its fair share. A lot of more people are interested in the arts now and aware of the arts, which again is a different kind of situation that uh, happened here locally even 20 or 30 years ago. So the more people that are involved, you, the more, you have a greater appreciative audience out there, which makes for a better arts theme.